Last but not least, we're going to add a flap in the front to achieve the final look and we're going to do this by selecting our rectangle tool and let's just create a rectangle that's going to go over the front side of our purse so something like this let's also find it where it is in the 3D window we're going to sew this flap so this line, this flap is going to be sewn actually to this line right here which is actually a part of the back side of the handbag so I'm going to take my segment sewing tool and select these two lines and sew them together oh, wait something didn't go right let's just go back with Control and Z and I'm actually going to take this flap a bit upwards and now I'm going to stitch it again let's take our edit sewing tool because we see that the sewing lines are reversed so we're going to select the seam line right click and select reverse sewing and let's push it maybe a little bit closer to our purse and simulate by pressing spacebar there we go let's wait a second till it drops and now I think we can afford to make it even longer because we lost some of the length right here so I'm just going to push it upwards a bit more and then take my edit pattern tool and prolong this line a bit we're also going to be changing the shape here in the front and we're going to do that by right clicking on the line selecting split and we're going to select the last option to split the line in two segments and then we're going to prolong this point okay now let's take our edit round corner tool and we're going to round this off a bit so it won't be so pointy all right now i also want this flap to be closed off with a button here so i'm going to insert two internal circles first is going to go the first one is going to go to the front side of the purse and the second one is going to go on the flap so let's take our internal circle tool and let's position an internal circle somewhere around here now we can also reposition it now that we see it better perhaps a bit lower so something like that and let's just copy and paste by pressing ctrl c and ctrl v there we go now let's take our free sewing tool since we're going to be sewing these two circles together and basically just double click on one and double click on the other to sew them together let's press spacebar to see what we have okay I may have positioned the internal circle on the front pattern of our purse a bit too high up so I'm going to take my transform pattern tool and just position it a bit lower maybe even a bit more all right and let's not forget to select the second layer and also apply that material to the flap that we just created so drag and drop there we go now once this flap is created we can also put a 3d button in here so let's go to our button tool and let's just click on the area where we want our button to be so somewhere around here there we go and as we can see in the 3d window it's definitely too small and I also don't want the shape to be like this so we're going to access these settings by clicking on the default button under the button tab and we're going to change its shape to something a bit more interesting so I think something like this would work well and also change the size I think 45 might do the trick maybe even change the shape to something else like okay I like this one better now we will be putting some interesting details with the help of the internal lines and we're just going to take our internal polygon tool 
and create a straight line across from the flap and another one and also kind of like a triangle shape right here okay i'm actually going to put this a bit lower and something like this okay now we're going to click on the line right click and go cut and sew so we're going to get different patterns from this and also select these two right click and cut and sew now it wouldn't separate these shapes so let's try with the other line there we go so we get separate patterns now this is really not quite visible right now but later on when we're going to be changing our textures and adding some color we're going to create a nice effect right here so it's going to be a little more interesting than it is now now if you feel like there is not enough wrinkles all around let's say for instance i think there's not enough wrinkles here in the back side we can always change that by selecting the pattern and bumping up the shrinkage weft and warp so even more to 108 and don't forget to simulate don't forget to bump up the shrinkage warp as well since this is set i will also take a look at what's happening in the front because i believe something went wrong and i was right a mistake was made with the cut and sew option so let's access our segment sewing tool and just um sew this manually but as you can see it's not going to work because i have two patterns right here and only one here so we will take our free sewing tool for this and select the first line and sew it on to the piece and then we're going to select the second one and sew off the rest of the fabric and let's simulate that okay so for instance here it might seem like there is too much wrinkles but if you're doing renders you will quickly notice that some details are not as visible when we export our model to another 3d application so when we're adding some lighting and textures those wrinkles can be even less visible so what i like to do is i always like to exaggerate a bit in md when stitching handbags and furniture especially, you will not be able to get away with a little bit of sculpting, especially when you're doing close-ups. Things like wrinkles can be easily added on later or erasing certain stitches and bumps that you don't need. It's very common for creative professionals to achieve a basic shape within MD and import that model to ZBrush or another similar application and clean up the model there and perhaps add any additional detail if it's needed. For instance, for my handbag, I erased the stitches on the sides and also added some wrinkles. So if we take a look at the back side of the purse that we just created, we quickly see that its effect is very similar to a cushion or maybe even a Chesterfield sofa. So you can create all of these things in MD as well, using the same techniques and tools as used for this handbag. This brings our module to conclusion and in the next one we will be covering materials.